All right, this is part two of Druidry, Living in the World. The real test of the value of a spiritual path lies in the degree to which it can help us live our lives in the world. It needs to be able to provide us with inspiration, counsel, and encouragement as we negotiate the sometimes difficult and even tragic events that can occur during a lifetime. The primary philosophical posture of Druidism is one of love and respect towards all of life, towards fellow human beings and animals, and all of nature. A word often used by Druids to describe this approach is reverence, which expands the concept of respect to include an awareness of the sacred. By being reverent towards human beings, for example, Druids treat the body, relationships, and sexuality with respect and as sacred. Reverence should not be confused with piousness or a lack of vigorous engagement. True reverence is strong and sensual as well as gentle and kind. This attitude of reverence and respect extends to all creatures, and so many Druids will either be vegetarian or will eat meat but support compassionate farming and be opposed to factory farming methods. Again, the belief that we should love all creatures is likely to be tempered with a robust realism that will not exclude the possibility that we might want to kill certain creatures such as m mosquitoes. For many druids, today the primary position of love and respect towards all creatures extend to include a belief in the idea of causing no harm to any sentient being. This idea is known in Eastern tradi traditions as the doctrine of ahimsa or nonviolence, and was the first and was first described in around 800 BC in the Hindu scriptures. The Upanishads, Jains, Hindus, and Buddhists all teach this doctrine, which became popular in the West following the nonviolent protests of Mahatma Gandhi. The Parihaka Maori protest movement in New Zealand and the campaigns of Martin Luther King in the United States also helped to spread the idea of ahimsa around the world. Many Druids today adopt a similar stance of abstaining from harming others and of focusing on the idea of peace, drawing their inspiration from the classical accounts of the Druids, which portrayed them as meditators, I'm sorry, which portrayed them as mediators who abstained from war and who urged peace on opposing armies. Julius Caesar wrote, For they, the Druids, generally settle all their disputes, both public and private. The Druids usually abstain from war, nor do they pay taxes together with the others. They have exemption from warfare. And Diodorus Siculus wrote, Often when the combatants are ranged face to face and swords are drawn and spears are bristling, these men come between the armies and stay the battle, just as wild beasts are sometimes held spellbound. Thus, even among the most savage barbarians, anger yields to wisdom, and Mars is shamed before the muses. In addition, Druids today can follow the example of one of... of one of the most important figures in the modern Druid movement, Ross Nichols, who, in common with many of the world's greatest thinkers and spiritual teachers, upheld the doctrines of nonviolence and pacifism. Many of Nichols' contemporaries, who shared similar, sim similar interests in Celtic mythology, were also pacifists, including T.H. White, the author of The Arthurian, the Once and Future King. Nichols often used to finish essays he wrote with the simple signing off, Peace to All Beings. The Web of Life and the Illusion of Separateness Woven into much of Druid thinking and all of its practice is the idea or belief that we are all connected to in a universe that is essentially benign, that we do not exist as isolated beings who must fight to survive in a cruel world. Instead, we are seen as part of a great web or fabric of life that includes every living creature and all of creation. This is essentially a pantheistic view of life, which sees all of nature as sacred 
and as interconnected. Druids often experience this belief in their bodies and hearts rather than simply in their minds. They find themselves feeling increasingly at home in the world, and when they walk out onto the land and look up at the moon or stars, or smell the coming rain on the wind, they feel in the fabric of their beings that they are a part of the family of life, that they are home, and that they are not alone. The consequences of this feeling and belief are profound. Apart from this trusting posture towards life bringing benefits in psychological and physical health, there are benefits to society too. Abuse and exploitation comes from the illusion of separateness. Once you believe that you are a part of the family of life and that all things are connected, the values of love and reverence for life naturally follow, as does the practice of peacefulness, of harmlessness, or ahimsa. Now, the law of the harvest. Related to the idea that we are all connected in one great web of life, is the belief held by most Druids that whatever we do in the world creates an effect which will ultimately also affect us. A similar idea is found in many different traditions and cultures. Folk wisdom in Britain says that what goes around comes around, and in Egypt the idea attributed to the Apostle Paul when he said, As ye sow, so shall ye reap, was spoken by the god Thoth, several thousand years earlier in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, when he said, Truth is the harvest scythe. Uh, scythe. It's S C Y T H E. What is sown, love or anger or bitterness, that shall be your bread. The corn is no better than its seed. Then let what you plant be good. In Hinduism and Buddhism, the idea is expressed as the doctrine of cause and effect, karma. The two beliefs that all is connected and that we will harvest the consequences of our actions come naturally to Druids because they represent ideas that evolve out of an observation of the natural world, just as the feeling of our being part of the great web of life can come to us as we gaze in awe at the beauty of nature, so the awareness that we will reap the consequences of our actions also comes to us as we observe the processes of sowing and harvesting. Wow, that is very, very beautiful. So this is coming, so the source is coming from um, What Do Druids Believe by Philip Cargom. And I now will, um, I will now give my opinion of what I, what I think about Druidry and Druidism. I think it's a rather beautiful, peaceful spirituality. I personally can relate with this greatly, and I, I find myself very intrigued. And I think I would um, further research into this spiritual practice and probably incorporate part of that into my own personal practice. Yeah, I really, I'm really fascinated by Druidry. I really do really believe in these principles that they stand for, and they all perfectly make sense to me. Everything seems very, very, very on target, just like right on point. And yeah, I really love that, the respect for life, how we're all interconnected with everything, so we can't view ourselves, you know, separate, which then, you know, we won't be exploiting the earth if we see that we're a part of a part of it. And it just seems like it's simple living and living in harmony with nature and cultivating, um, I like that it's very much focused on cultivating, um, your artistic nature and music is involved and arts and things like that and being creative and being a part of this world and not just you know waiting for your death being trying to be so so austere and then just waiting for your death and to be promoted to some better place i really those are really turn off spiritualities when they're like that 
when they're so extreme and very focused on just the afterlife and not not being present here in this life and participating in a positive way. So that's what I really appreciate about Druidism, that it's fully participating and it's celebrating. It feels like when I read this, it feels like every day would be a celebration of life. It would be a celebration of all our, you know, everything that's equal to us, all the animals and trees and plants and life and rocks and stones and mountains, that everything would be fully appreciated and um, respected in that sense. So that's about what I want to share today on Druidism. So thanks for listening, everyone. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write down below, and I'll be back soon.